this is the learning center after you're finished setting up QuickBooks. This is the first screen you see. It's a series of tutorials that help educate you more about QuickBooks. None of it's specific to real estate investing. In fact, I started here when I started my uh, teaching myself to use QuickBooks for real estate. Uh, as you can see on the left hand side there's tabs so understand the basic customers and sales which we're going to deal with in a when we talk about tenants and renting properties uh, vendors and expenses we're going to deal with that re re relatively quickly um, like I said these are tutorials so you can always take a look at them if you uh, don't want this window to show up again you can uncheck it so if you uncheck this button here that'll quit kit quick keep it from showing up again and if you ever want to see the tutorial again, this learning center is under the help menu. So we're just going to click on begin using QuickBooks. This is the QuickBooks homepage. And set up like most Windows applications, there's a menu. So at the top of the menu, there's file, which lets you open and close the company, switch to various modes. Um, there's some backup, there's some backup and restore utilities. There's an edit menu. The edit menu changes based on what you're doing. There's a view which lets you open a window list and look at more than one window. There's a list which we're going to use a bit during the course of these tutorials. There's the company. Now, the company's interesting. One of the things that, that you have to do, and you may as well do it now, is come down here to company information, click on company information, and enter in your company's EIN number or your social security number. If you have an LLC, you should have an EIN number. And then click OK. Uh, so that's the company, that's the company menu. And you have customers, vendors, employees, banking. Essentially the same thing that you have on the home page. So right below the menu you have a toolbar. So here's the home button on the toolbar. In fact, if you close the home page you can get it back by going to home or you can do the same thing by going to company uh, customer center takes you to the customer center here's what the customer center looks like we're going to use this when we talk start talking about renting properties and to uh, tenants here's the vendor center we're going to use that relatively quickly when we start doing buying property and doing rehabs uh, employee center in my case we don't have any employees reports which we'll talk about near the end and then on the home page itself same set of buttons on the left hand side the vendor button takes you to the same vendor center the customer button takes you to the same customer center and employees does the same you can use any of these buttons to do exactly what they say so if you want to add invoices you can do that if you want to enter bills you can do that uh, here's your banking section so if you want to write checks or look at the register or record deposits uh, items and services we'll talk about in a minute let me just show you what they look like there's nothing in here now but there will be we'll create some new items later on and lastly the thing that we need to do right now is we need to change our chart of accounts so there's a few ways to get to the chart of accounts. One is to click on this button here, and that brings up our chart of accounts. And the other way is from the list menu to go to a chart of accounts. Either way, this is the list of assets, liabilities, income, and expenses. And you can add additional accounts, which is what we're going to do. One account that we definitely are going to add is our bank account. So at the bottom of the chart account window, there are three buttons. There's the account button, which lets you create, edit, and delete new accounts, change the way they, the account window looks, and import accounts. There's an activity window, which lets you perform specific activities on various accounts. And there's a report window, which lets you get a court reports. OK, we're going to create a few accounts. We're going to create a checking account. We're going to create a home equity line of credit. We're going to create a placeholder for properties that we own. We're going to create a placeholder for mortgages that we owe. And we're going to create a special account called Unclosed Properties. And we'll explain that as we go along. First, to create your first account, click on Account. And then New. 
and here is the account window the new account window you'll notice that QuickBooks wants to know what type of account this is and in this particular case it is a checking account so we type in the name of the bank and a description if you want one of the things I advise people to do is to create is to um, enter as much information as they have and we took ten dollars out of our pocket to open this checking account so we'll click OK and here's our checking account you'll notice that QuickBooks created another account called opening balance equity this is the money that we put in the account to start the company now we're going to create our loan so here we go back to the account button and back to new this time we're going to create a liability remember home equity line of credits are essentially short term so this is a current liability and QuickBooks doesn't like duplicate entries so I can't call this the same as my checking account so I'll just add that and description and the account number and no balance now our placeholders so back to account and new this time this is a fixed asset because it's the properties that we own and this is just a, play, a placeholder account as we buy properties they those properties will be sub accounts of this account and same thing one more time account new for long-term liabilities these are mortgages we don't have any there's nothing else we need to put in here as we get mortgages they will be sub accounts of this mortgage placeholder and lastly last one uh, from the account button new again this is going to be a current liability now this account when you sign an agreement of sale you basically have agreed to buy the property it becomes a liability of yours you owe somebody money until settlement so this unclosed property account is going to be that placeholder so the way this works is when you buy a property um, you hold the liability in that property until the property is closed and so this account will always end up zero after you finish with the property so we'll click OK and that's it we are done now with this chart of accounts uh, so see you next